I've done the one marker challenge once before on my channel, and looking back on it led me to thinking, what if I did the one marker challenge with no fine liner or white gel pen? So today, I've decided to do that, but in my new sketchbook. And before I start getting into the video, I need to actually pick a marker. So I brought over my Ohuhus to see which one I'm going to use. And of course I decided to do it at random, shuffling them around over and over and over again until I got this one. Wait, is that a six or a nine? Uh, probably need to check it. Well, according to my Ohuhu color swatch sheet, this marker is a number six, at least according to the cap. So I'll be referring to this marker as a number six for the rest of this video. So let's say goodbye to my microns one final time and say hello to my sketchbook and my one single marker. Oh yeah, and a number two pencil. I'll still need a sketch with something. Unless y'all want to see me sketching with just a single marker. Let me know in the comments down below. So with that, I went straight to the sketching, just pouring my thoughts onto the paper and deciding what I was going to draw before I went in with the marker. And sometimes with these challenge videos, the hardest part is putting your ideas onto the paper and actually deciding what I'm going to draw. So I just thought, let's not make this too complicated. Let's make it simple. Let's just make it a girl with her hands on her hips shouldn't be that difficult. It should be pretty easy, but of course it's not going to be that easy, is it? So at first it was going really, really well. I actually really liked it. The torso and the legs were pretty good. And then I started moving on to the right arm and the right arm, it just was giving me all sorts of trouble. It wasn't looking right. And I felt like I had to spend quite a bit of time on it. So in the end, I was just like, you know what? Let's not spend too much time on it. Let's just keep it here. And once I got to that point, it was really, really dark. And the whole point of bringing in the pencil was to make sure I had as little of anything that wasn't marker on the paper. So this whole point was to have it be erasable, but it was extremely dark. And so I was really worried that it was going to stay on the paper and it was going to show through the marker. And that was not the look I was going for. So I was just decided to move on to the face and just hope that it didn't show through. And the face I actually really, really liked. The face was exactly the way I wanted it in the sketching phase. But of course that usually means that the sketch is going to be way better than the actual final product. And I'm the type of person where sometimes the sketch is way better than the final product. So I was just hoping that that wasn't going to happen. And I moved on to the hair and the hair I actually really, really liked. I tried to keep it very loose though, very not finished. So that way I could actually do it as the final product with the markers. Cause again, the whole point was for the sketch to be erasable, to be simple. So that way I could actually sketch out all the details and flesh them out while I was using the marker and not while I was using the pencil. So I just made everything really, really quick and really loose and flowy. And that was also what I did with the jacket here. But unfortunately, when I did the jacket on the right side, it just added to the dark pencil problem. And I did not want that problem at all. So hopefully with everything else being very, very light, that would not arise elsewhere. And then I started erasing and that perfect face that I really, really liked was gone. I honestly wished I had taken a picture of it before I had completely ruined it by erasing it, but you know what? It's fine. We are moving on and moving on to the marker. So thankfully, a lot of that dark pencil on the right side decided to erase, but as you can see that some of it was still showing, but I did not have time to worry about it because I was moving on to the markers. And unfortunately, the marker with the eyes I was hoping if I had kept it really, really light and really, really faint and just barely touched the paper, there would be some highlight, but there wasn't because marker is the type of medium where it just spreads like wildfire. So that didn't happen. 
But thankfully, the rest of the marker, when I was doing it on the nose and on the mouth, kind of acting like pseudo line art, decided to stay. So that was great. And then I moved on to the hair. And thankfully, there's no problems yet. No trouble whatsoever. I was having this video go on without a single hitch, and it was going great. It was smooth sailing from here. But of course, when I say that, it's not going to be smooth sailing, and there is going to be a problem somewhere at some place. We just haven't gotten to it yet. So now we are moving on to the headband, and here's where our first problem arises. What are we actually doing with the marker? So now that we have encountered this problem, we need to find some sort of solution. But we're going to do that later, because we are now doing pseudo line art, so we can't do that now. And now we are just doing the jacket and everything else, because we are postponing our problem. But we encounter another problem, because we can't do pseudo line art forever. And when we did the hands, you could see on the left hand side that it is not going well. It kind of blended in with that pinky and it just kind of disappeared. Whoopsie. So now we had one pinky disappear, so at least it's not too big of a problem. We'll have plenty good things to come. So the skirt I actually really, really liked. And that actually turned out really, really well in my opinion. And with the boots, boots didn't have too much issues either. I probably didn't have to go as hard as I did in the beginning, but you know, whatever. Not that big of a deal. So now we're finally encountering the issue of what do we do with our marker? Where are we adding and where are we not adding? So here I decided to add color into the headband and to the shirt. And the main thing I feel like with this marker challenge and what it mainly does for the artist is shapes and it helps the artist really develop shapes in what we're doing. Cause that's the main way, unless you have a really, really light marker to develop your art. So here you can see me doing all sorts of techniques like hatching, cross hatching, all sorts of stuff. I mainly tried to do hatching with the skin and cross hatching with the jacket and other articles of clothing. So the shirt I just kept to polka dots, really simple. The jacket I actually thought was really, really clever. I just decided to keep it to buttons and uh, holes in the jacket for buttons. And then I got to the hair. And I feel like this was just a mistake. I should not have done it. I decided to color in the tips with the marker because I thought that would be some cool differentiation, but it really was not. Because as you can see, the eyelashes kind of disappeared in the hair. And I kind of regret doing that with the bangs, but you know, can't really change it because marker is kind of permanent like that. But oh well, it's not that big of an error. And when we got to the skirt, I decided to do lines at the bottom. And I thought that would look really cool. But then I just kept going and going and going and going and sooner or later it was just a striped skirt. And again, it's not the biggest thing in the world, but I don't know. I feel like some of the stripes I could have done better on because I just kept on going and going and going. But you know what? Maybe I'm just being too harsh with, them, with myself because at the end of the day, I feel like this is mainly more to just get an artist to keep doing shapes in their work. And that's what I'm doing is like lines and circles and all sorts of stuff in there to differentiate stuff. And that's probably what this challenge is meant for, just to be way looser with what we're doing, just be flowier. And in the end, I feel like I got that. And that's honestly a really good thing to learn. I feel like every artist should do this challenge because this honestly really, really helps with getting out of that I can just differentiate things with color mindset and actually differentiate things with shapes and textures and things like that. So I'd recommend it. And I decided to go in with one final shape of a rectangle behind the characters. That way it would really pop off the page. 
And the thing with that is I had to make sure that it didn't touch the character at all. Because if it touched the character, then it wouldn't really separate the character from the paper and would just have it be part of this hot pink blob. So I just really made sure that as I was coloring in the cir rectangle, sorry, not a circle, this rectangle, that it wasn't touching the character at any point. It wouldn't touch her skirt, her jacket, her anything. So here I'm just making sure that it's lining up with the lines on the other side. So that way it's actually a rectangle and not quadrilateral blob thing. <laughs> so now I'm just coloring it in and I decided to be a little bit annoying to myself by making it way larger than it had to be. But honestly, I think that just made it cooler. And that way I was actually coloring more on the page and not having it be completely white aside from the character. And she's not surrounded by a bunch of white negative space. And that's something that I feel like I improved from the two years ago version. Because the two years ago version, it just had all white space surrounding the character. And I think that sketchbook's actually bigger than this one. And as you can see, here is this year's one with the rectangle behind it. And here's last year's one. And that one was with an orange marker and this one's with the pink marker. So which one do you like better? Two years ago one or this year's one? And personally, I think both have their good qualities and their bad ones. So, honestly, something I did last year that I didn't do this year was using the colorless blender. And maybe I should have used that in this one. I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below which one y'all think is better. And with that, I hope y'all like this video as much as I did making it. Have a magnificent day and I will see y'all later.